We're going to take a look at the discriminant of the quadratic formula now, which tells us a lot about the quality of the answers we're going to get and what type of answers they're going to be. Well, the discriminant, again, don't forget, is under here, but it is b squared minus 4ac. Now, what this is going to help us describe is what we like to call the nature of the roots. Now, the roots are the solutions, so the solutions we're going to get. So we can actually just look at the solutions and tell what the nature of them are by what numbers they are, but the discriminant will actually tell us about that beforehand. So there's only a few different numbers the discriminant could come out in general. It's either going to come out to be a negative number, right? It's either going to be negative, or it's going to come out to equal zero, right? Or it's going to come out to be a positive number. That's the only thing that can happen. It's only one of those three. So we've got to con consider only these three cases. But actually under positive, we're going to consider two subcases here. We're going to consider when we have a perfect square. So perfect squares would be like 4 or 9, 16. Those are your perfect squares. And we're going to talk about if it's a non-perfect square, like 2, 3, 5. There's many more non-perfect squares than perfect squares. All right. So if the discriminant came out negative, what would that mean? Well, since it's under a square root, we can't take the square root of a negative number in the real number system. So it's not going to be real. It's actually going to be imaginary. But it's still plus or minus. So it's going to be two imaginary solutions. Let's look at when the discriminant would come out to equal 0. Well, the square root of 0 does exist, so it is going to be a real solution. And since the square root of 0 is 0, there won't be a square root left, so that means that we're going to get a rational number. But as far as the plus or minus sign goes here, if the discriminant were 0, we'd be doing plus or minus 0, which is the same thing. So we only get one solution here, one unique solution. There's technically two solutions. It's actually the same answer twice. So we call that a double root. It's a double solution. It's the same solution twice. Now for positive. Well, if it's positive for both of these, it's going to be real because the square root of a positive number does actually exist. And because it's plus or minus, and since there will be an actual number here either way, it's 2. So they both give you two real solutions. So what's the difference? Well, with the perfect square, like the square root of 9 is 3, there's not going to be a square root left, so that's going to be rational. As with something like the square root of 2, which would be a non-perfect square, that's going to mean that it is irrational. So these are the only possibilities. So based on if the number is negative, 0, a positive perfect square, or a positive non-perfect square, I can tell you about the nature of the roots. What are the answers going to be like? If it's negative... There's going to be two imaginary solutions if it's zero. There's going to be one real rational solution that we call a double root. If it's positive perfect square, two real rational. If it's a non-perfect square, two real irrational. So there is a look at the discriminant of the quadratic formula.